Many students get freaked out by the phrase normal distribution. And when they hear it, they go screaming and running out of the exam room. I'm here to tell you it's not actually that bad. In fact, it's all around you and a very simple concept to understand at heart. What do I mean that it's all around us? Well, many things in life, in fact, arguably most things in life are normally distributed on a bell curve. Think of heights. Most people are at the average height or near to the average height. Some people are shorter, some people are taller, and a few people are super tall or super short. So that's a normal distribution. Same thing for weights, same thing for IQs, same thing for many, many other aspects of life. It follows a normal distribution. Now, what does that have to do with the GRE? Well, luckily enough, the ETS on their website outlined the only things you need to know about normal distribution for the test. And here is a screen grab of the only time normal distribution appears in their math review. That's right, that's all you need to know. Now, some of you are gonna be saying, well, that still looks pretty complicated to me. But there's just a few concepts to remember and I'm gonna run through them now and then give you two practice questions, one of medium difficulty, one of hard difficulty, and we're gonna do them together and see how we go. First, what is one thing to notice? The bell curve is symmetrical and that means the mean, which is right bang in the middle, is gonna be the same as the median. That's a cool fact and it applies specifically to normal distribution. And it's not true in necessarily other circumstances, just for normal distribution. The mean equals the median and the bell curve is symmetrical. Okay, so we have the mean in the middle, but what are those lines on either side? What's it going up in or going down in? It's going up in one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and then down in one standard deviation two standard deviations. Now, if you're not sure what a standard deviation is, I've done another video on that topic, but for now you can just think of it as a way of measuring the spread of results. It's really not that complicated. It's a single number simply representing how spread out the results are. For example, you might have an average weight of 75 kilograms and a standard deviation of three kilograms, meaning anyone between 78, which is one standard deviation above 75, and 72, which is one standard deviation below 75, would be within one standard deviation of the mean. In between those two central lines you can see on the diagram. What about the numbers? Here's where things get really exciting. There are three numbers you're gonna have to remember for the test. And I don't often advocate memorization, but these numbers actually can be pretty interesting for real life too. As we've seen, normal distribution applies in many areas of real life. What are the three numbers? 2, 14, and 34. Those numbers correspond to the percentages going up towards the center from the left and then going down from the center to the right, as you can see on the diagram. In other words, we have 2% of people being less than two standard deviations below the mean. Then we have 14% of people being between two standard deviations and one standard deviation below the mean. Next, we have 34% of people being between one standard deviation below and the mean. Then, because the diagram is symmetrical, those same percentages apply the other way, going to the right. By memorizing those three numbers, 2%, 14%, and 34%, we can also work out for ourselves two more numbers that are quite interesting about normal distribution. What percent of people are within one standard deviation of the mean? Well, we have 34 within one below the mean, and 34 within one above the mean, and therefore we have 68% of people within one standard deviation of the mean. 
Using the diagram and those percentages that we memorized, how many people are within two standard deviations of the mean? Adding up the 14, 34, 34, and 14, you should get 96%. So 96% of people are within two standard deviations of the mean. Another cool fact we don't necessarily have to memorize as long as we've memorized those three key numbers, 2%, 14%, and 34%. One last thing before we move on to the questions, all of this knowledge about a normal distribution only applies if the question mentions that the population is normally distributed. If they don't use that phrase, then it's not normal distribution, so we can't use any of those memorized percentages. Okay, enough build up, time to get to the first question, which hopefully you can see on your screen now. In a set of student exam results, the 30th percentile corresponded to a score of 16 and the 40th percentile corresponded to a score of 27. Which quantity is bigger? The 50th percentile score or 38? If you want to pause the video, think about it and then tell me the answer. It's a quantitative comparison question. So the answers are quantity A is bigger, quantity B is bigger, both quantities are the same, or D. We can't tell which quantity is bigger. This is gonna be fun. I honestly wonder how many people fell into the trap. If you remember the last thing I said before we got to this question, I said that the tricks about normal distribution only apply if the question says that the population is normally distributed. If they don't use that phrase, there's nothing we can really tell about the distribution of the population. Some of you might have assumed it was going up by the same amount, and so the quantities would be the same, or that towards the middle, it will go up by a bit less or a bit more. So you'd have picked A, B, or C on that basis. But the actual answer is D, because the question never said that this population was normally distributed. So we have no idea what the shape of the bell curve is. So we have no idea what score corresponds to a 50th percentile. That was a great warm up question to keep you all awake. I wonder how many of you are now sitting there embarrassed waiting for the next question. Either way, this one is a full blown, hard, normal distribution question. If you can get this right, you can definitely eye that 170 quant score. And here is the question. The heights of a group of math teachers are normally distributed around the mean. If the median height in the group is 175 centimeters and the 84th percentile corresponds to a height of 181 centimeters, which of the following does the second percentile correspond to? This is really tough. We're definitely gonna need the diagram the bell curve and our memorized percentages to get this right. But with that said, you might want to pause the video, have a go yourself and see if you can get the answer. The key thing to note is that those percentiles are not chosen randomly. Notice we have the question being about the second percentile. While using our memorized percentages, that second percentile corresponds to those scores who are at or below two standard deviations below the mean. What about the 84th percentile? Using your diagram with the memorized percentages, what does the 84th percentile correspond to? Well, it's 34% above the mean, which is 50th percentile, and so it's one standard deviation above the mean. Right, so we know that the 84th percentile, which is 181 centimeters, is one standard deviation above the mean. And we know they're asking about the second percentile, which is two standard deviations below the mean. What about the fact that the median height is 175 centimeters? If you were listening from the beginning, you'd remember that the median equals the mean in a normal distribution. Therefore, the mean, the middle height, is 175 centimeters. With the middle height being 175 centimeters and one standard deviation above 
the mean height being 181 centimeters, we can calculate the difference and that difference will be one standard deviation. The difference between 175 centimeters and 181 centimeters is six centimeters. So there we have it, isn't this amazing? Six centimeters is our standard deviation for this normal distribution. Our last challenge is to work out the actual question, which is the second percentile, which if you remember from our diagram, is two standard deviations below the mean. We have a mean of 175 centimeters. We've just calculated that one standard deviation is six centimeters. So two standard deviations will be 12 centimeters and 175 in the middle, take away 12 would be 163 centimeters. And that is the correct answer. That was a really tough 170 level quant question for the GRE. Normal distribution doesn't come up for the GMAT, but I hope I made it that bit easier by emphasizing drawing a bell curve and memorizing those three percentages. And just with the background about what a normal distribution is and how common it is and how relatively simple it is once you understand it. I hope I've demystified it a bit. And if I have, what am I gonna say? Leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe. Anyway, thank you for watching and have a great week.